Hello and welcome back to Prophecy of Pendor and our Iron Man challenge. I am here saving a village, very Robin Hood-esque from some highwaymen that are attempting to raid it, of course. And after this, we are going to try and take the fight once again to the Empire to try and uh, reduce their presence in the area somewhat significantly. Now bear in mind that I am wanting to make as much money as possible. I did participate in a tournament off screen, did get a win out of that, which was, I guess, all right. I guess it really makes quite a big difference when I'm not commentating to my concentration. I mean, basically that, you know, come on, let's face it. I don't make much sense most of the time and even less when I'm playing at the same time too. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate these guys and then we're going to try and take care of the enemy vassals that are attempting to besiege Ethos at the moment. And I'm not entirely sure if they're still doing that. They might not have, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, I did actually take a quest from a farmer to participate in this particular defense and hopefully we'll gain some good honor for this. Obviously, it's just like plus one or something like that, but it is going to make a massive difference in the end and uh, saying that actually I'm, I'm thinking hmm, what better ways are there to get honor well the only other way that I can think of is releasing prisoners and so you know capturing vassals of course you can then release them from potentially being captured and then you're going to gain some honor from that but you're also going to gain honor from releasing Noldor nobles as I spoke about in a previous episode and that's Probably the greatest and, and best way that you can do it, but unfortunately I'm not currently, you know, aggressive towards the Noldor, and so it is going to be very difficult for me to make that happen, but anyway, there you go, there's a victory for us. We're going to refuse the reward, and as you can see, look at this, I've got 32 relation with this village because I have seriously saved them so many times. All right, so we're now in a battle against some Empire vassals. These guys were running away from Ethos as they uh, ceased their activity. They actually decided to stop besieging the town for some unknown reason because uh, all of them together, I did some rough calculations. Let's face it, maths is not my strong point whatsoever, but the point is, is that they had about a thousand units, maybe more, and they decided to stop. So kind of weird. Kind of weird, i got to say. I would have expected them to continue with this one because there are none of my vassals nearby, as far as I'm aware. I haven't seen any of them for quite some time. And bear in mind that they do have some of these Guardian Empire Knights and so on and so forth. Some really, really good units in their armies. But uh, it is apparently proving not to be that useful to them. And they're, they're actually having some difficulties dealing with our forces even like so but obviously we do have the height advantage which does make a massive difference but yeah these guardian empire knights and everything like that those guys are pretty strong you know they're not as strong as the iron circle centurions as far as i'm aware but they're still strong enough to be able to make any kind of siege attempt relatively difficult for us to defend against and well there you go i guess that's i think i guess that's just how it's going to be and they seem to really not be very much wanting to continue to do the siege when I'm actually there. Like, when I'm not there, they basically go there immediately and try to besiege it, as we've seen multiple times in previous episodes. They literally just go straight there, and they're like, okay, besiege, you know, and then as soon as I arrive, they're like, okay, no siege. So, yeah, <laughs> it is a little bit, a uh, little bit unfortunate, really, because I would love to be able to take them down in that way, because if I can do that, that is going to deal such a decisive blow against those vassals that it is going to take them a very long time indeed to recuperate from it and then just not going to be able to do anything you know it's going to be one of those times where you know you just catch all of those vassals and they're all significantly weakened or whatever the case may be and then boom you can just run around their entire territory without having to worry about anything whatsoever because they're all dead, you know, they're all dead, they're all recuperating their forces, and let's face it, they don't take that long to recuperate anyway, and uh, they're going to be back on their feet in no time. As we've seen, Agathon is uh, one of our vassals, of course, we uh, persuaded him in a previous episode to join us, and he's running around with a really large army right now. I think the last time I saw him, he had about 130, not really large, but I guess it's kind of medium, moderate, whatever the case may be, but he does have some very strong knighthood order units, with him and that's obviously going to be the main thing that we have to consider the 
quality of our vassals units because if they're just running around with i don't know militia tier units then they're really going to have a hard time basically doing anything but there you go. We've only got two enemies remaining. And then I think we're probably... Uh, it's just unfortunate that we weren't able to take King Ulrich prisoner in the previous episode. Because if we could have done that, it would have very much helped us with his unique weapon. That's the thing that I'm actually going to start doing now as well. I think the Ravenstone King also has a bit of a target on his back. Because then we're going to be able to pretty easily well do anything we like you know i mean as, as long as we can get their unique weapons we'll be able to give those either to companions or to ourselves or whatever the case may be and then it's just going to be great oh hello lord leonius okay so this guy's actually a martial personality which is pretty good and i would love to be able to get him and you can see you have a feeling that defeated lord almost likes your kingdom so i'm actually unsure if i am going to take him prisoner we are going to lose some relation but on the other hand we're also going to maybe have the opportunity to gain a vassal i'm going to try this out because i'm not entirely sure if it's going to work but we're going to try it out nevertheless so i'm going to take him prisoner oh minus five relation it probably won't work for us. This guy... Oh, wow. Okay, apparently this message doesn't do anything because this guy is a pitiless uh, personality. And we're just going to let him go because I don't want him to join us. Thank you very much. And otherwise, we'll just take a couple of pieces of loot. I really need some, some food, actually. So I'm going to try and do that as well. So let's just try and capture... All of these Cobra Warriors, they're not the greatest, i got to say. Oh, Shadow Hunters. Give me those guys. Oh, yes. They are very nice indeed. Barkley units as well. Wow, I'm getting super lucky here, apparently. Okay, yeah, these guys are pretty good too. And I'm not entirely sure what I should... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was actually taking around these mercenary units because they're extremely expensive. And I actually took them out of one of my garrisons. And uh, there was a reason for that, because I literally just don't want to continue paying their wages as they're in my garrison, and it just kind of doesn't really make sense, considering they're not the greatest units ever anyway. It kind of makes more sense to get them out into the field, potentially being useful and, you know, stuff like that. But anyway, there's some prisoners for us, and this is where we currently are, right, right next to Rella Keep. And uh, there was Ethos as well. It's actually under siege right now, as you can see. So, hmm, do I want to... I don't want to attack any of these guys. What we're going to do first is we're going to talk to Lord Leonius. Maybe we will be able to... Mm, no, as I thought, you do need a positive relation to be able to do that. And we're actually going to just say, you're free to go because I want to gain some honor. We want to gain some uh, relation back with him. And Anson has leveled up as well. So we probably want to do that. Let's have a look and see what he can spec into. Well, theoretically, he could continue specking into strength, which might make sense, but he can currently use a pretty good crossbow as it is, as you can see, balanced crossbow, pretty nice. And uh, can he actually use? No, no. <laughs> yes, this armor is going to be extremely difficult for him to actually even end up wearing. It's just going to be way too much. So... I don't really know what to do with him, to be honest. Do I level up his strength? Do I level up his his intelligence? Because if I level up his intelligence, then we're obviously going to gain some more skill points, and that's going to enable him to gain some more power strike, iron flesh, and so on and so forth, for him to be able to survive that much more. Because I don't think... I mean, he's level 24. He might actually make a couple, a couple more. But I guess the additional skill points are going to be quite important. And that's it. I mean, I could get him some more Weapon Master as well. Weapon Master might actually be quite important for him too, but yeah, he's not really the best fighter as it is. So maybe it doesn't really make too much difference. Ah, hello! Ah, with your gain of 5,000 renown, you are hailed everywhere as the heroine of Pendor, and the Lords wish to grant you plus one charisma in recognition of your heroism. Oh, now that's actually really cool. I mean, obviously the stat isn't so isn't so cool because I actually don't need charisma. I mean, it's fine. It's nice. You know, it's nice to gain these additional bonuses and things like that. But as it stands right now, I am in a situation where it just doesn't really make that much sense. Anyway, let's go over to... Oh, dear. Okay, the Dashar might actually decide to uh, 
declare war against us now. But yeah, okay. Let's sell this, sell this, sell this. I'm actually going to sell the gold bar as well. And we have various loot, so I could potentially get a baggage train, but I am going to need a whole bunch of food. Wow, they really have nothing. Are you serious? That is terrible. All right, here we go. I just noticed a message that Igrim the Devourer had spawned, and I headed over to his usual hangout place, quote-unquote, which just so happens to be west of Singal, in between Windholm and Valambre, and I managed to find him. Unfortunately, there are a number of heretic armies in the area as well, so we do need to be a bit careful. Now, the greatest thing that we can do against Igrim is trying to find a really, really good vantage point. Unfortunately, in this area of the map, it is kind of hard to do that because most of the areas are flat uh, with very minimal hills and, and things like that. So it's going to be quite difficult for us to deal with these guys. Uh, I'm actually wondering whether I should just charge in. Should I just charge in? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we should probably just charge in, use our horse archery to its best effect because these guys are super, super difficult to uh, really take down, and you're going to need a lot of longevity to be able to do that. Bear in mind, we are up against 817 of them, and that is no, no easy feat. It is going to be no easy feat whatsoever to eliminate these guys, and they do have thrown weapons as well, so I might very well end up dying as a result of being in, in combat with these guys, but... Who knows, who knows. Anyway, as you can see, these fellows are literally taking massive amounts of punishment and still surviving like no one's business. Let me see if I can maybe get a headshot. Oh yeah, getting a headshot doesn't even make any difference. Yeah, I think personally, what I'm doing right here is not a good idea. So I'm actually gonna try and retreat real quick. All right, so we lost one Iron Knight, that's absolutely fine. We did kill 28 of them. Unfortunately, we didn't kill any Revenants? Aren't those the ones that are really, really tough? Oh my. This might be this might be one of those times when I just have to give up against a unique spawn. It really might might be just one of those times. I don't know whether it's going to really work out too well for us. It's gonna be a little bit difficult, but in the end, hopefully we will be able to prevail because Igrim is one of those guys. He's one of those guys that if you can eliminate the first line of his unique units then you will have an absolutely exceptionally easy time for the rest of the battle and uh, I just don't know whether my forces are capable of doing this okay so let's just do this thing where we uh, advance uh, advance a little bit there we go uh, I don't know whether this is going to work but we'll try it uh, I, I, I'll say that if we can't do this in this round. Yeah, Fallen Revenants. We didn't kill any of those in the previous fight, which is really bad. That is really bad. These Fallen Revenants are basically the main reason why Igrim is really, really hard to take out. Okay, come on. Come on, Iron Knights. I'm sure you can do much better than this. Are you, are you serious right now? <laughs> uh, yeah. It seems to me like this is this is just not going to work. I mean, look at this. I charge into these guys and do 82 damage, but they still live. They still live. It's absolutely crazy. Okay, we're going to retreat. That's going to be it for my attempts to try and eliminate Igrim. Unfortunately, he is a fresh spawn, of course, and I just don't have the, well, the, shall we say, beneficial environment. And uh, for some reason, I don't have enough really, really good units either. All right, so this is a little bit of an easier thing for us to do. I've returned to Empire territory, and I will be I will be going back and attempting to kill Igrim, but I took a look at the numbers of my Iron Knights, and it is completely understandable that I haven't been able to really do anything against them. Why do I have so many Noldor Rangers? Oh, <laughs> okay, got it, got it. I was like... Why do I have so many Noldor Rangers? And then I remembered, I'm actually helping Noldor in the battle right now. Yeah, you see see my memory? It's, it's really good, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Not sarcasm at all, is it? Uh, anyway, point is, we're helping some Noldor in a battle against an Empire vassal. We will be going back to fight Igrim, not in this episode, but probably when we are a little bit stronger with our Iron Knights, because I looked at the amount that I have, and I have about 50 of them in comparison to what I had beforehand, which was, well, over 100, you know, so you can imagine that it's kind of obvious to expect 
that uh, I'm not going to be able to defeat someone as powerful as Igrim with about 50 good units and then everyone else is relatively high tier but they are not as powerful as what you would expect to see from a very late game army and I think what we're going to do is I think what I will do at the very least is I will go off screen and I will try to literally just earn as much money as I can because at the moment we seem to be at a bit of a standstill in regards to what I can actually do. I mean, yeah, you know, I can take things. I can definitely continue to besiege things and I can definitely take stuff, you know. I have no, no real problems with actually being able to capture... Uh, castles and uh, some weakened towns at the very least because I've seen a bunch of towns at, at the moment that are about 800 strong. And personally, I don't feel like going in and fighting 800 units and then potentially ending up losing a whole bunch of extra Iron Knights is worth it at the moment. I think that if we can completely dominate them in every single way, so in other words, just go in with such a powerful army that we will be able to win with minimal casualties, that's going to be the thing that I will attempt to do. And of course, as time goes on and as I'm running around and earning money from enterprises and, and ransoms and obviously tournaments as well, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to gain huge amounts of noblemen and that is hopefully going to then end up with us being able to recruit like 50 or 100 noblemen. I mean, it's going to take me quite some time to do that and uh, that reminds me that I should have probably taken more fiefs for myself. Should have definitely done that because if I had taken more fiefs for myself, I would have gained more noblemen per week and at the moment I'm gaining like five so, yeah, you can see that it's kind of difficult. Ah, this guy is fantastic. Oh, yes. Oh, this is perfect. Look at this guy. He's crazy good. He's got, he's an upstanding reputation. He is the lord of only one village. That's, that's kind of sad. Oh, and he's the, he's the son of Sidonius Legatus. Oh, that's hilarious, considering we actually eliminated him. And uh, Sidonius is actually a pitiless of vassal. So I'm actually going to take him prisoner because we will be attempting to persuade him to join us, of course. And uh, yeah, you can see that I have a little bit more a little bit more uh, food and things like that now, so that's pretty good. And otherwise, I'm going to be speaking to him. Hello, yes, join me. And he fails to bring over any centers because, of course, he, yeah, he only had a village available to him. But uh, yeah, there you go. All right, fantastic. That's really, really good. So yeah, we're actually back at Relic Keep because, well, why not, you know? And we are going to attempt... Uh, oh yeah, Kalendane Castle actually came under siege. So we're going to try and go over there. Ravenstone and Fiertsvane have made peace. You know what that means? That means one of those factions is going to declare war on us relatively soon. That's what's going to happen. All right, we've got to be a bit on the lookout for that. Hello, fellows. Do you mind uh, vacating the premises? There we are. Let's wait here for some time and see if they actually decide to go through with it this time. Well, there is a faction declaring war against someone, but it's not against us. I'm actually kind of surprised about that. Oragar Castle has been besieged by someone as well. Now, I'm actually unsure where Oragar... Is that, is that ours? Is Oragar Castle ours? I don't think so somehow so let me actually just take a quick look here Oragar castle so O, where's O? there's not many there we go no 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 that is actually uh, belongs to various legatus who is a good-natured vassal who i would love to take prisoner absolutely love to take prisoner and he is also favorable to us where is various legatus actually because if we can take him prisoner is that him no no that's not him um, but yeah, if we can take him prisoner, we will be in, oh yeah, we will be swimming in really, really good vassals. So it might make sense to, for me to actually head over to Oragar Castle, which is down here, because he might be in the area, and then we might be able to take him prisoner and then persuade him to join us, which would be fantastic. Uh, there's Rimusk. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Hello. Move on, please. Maybe he's good as well. I actually don't know all of their reputations by heart, of course. Hello. Oh, no, that's Marius Imperator. Okay. Don't really need to worry about him. Are they going for a tournament? 
They might be going for a tour. Ah, various legatus. There he is. There's, he's only got 38. He's only got 38 in his army. Wow. I'm actually wondering whether he's going to run away from the castle. Because they have Mansawa Bay here. Mansawa Bay, as you can no doubt see, was the lucky recipient of huge amounts of rescued prisoners. And as you can see, he has almost 500 units in his army. What a crazy, crazy guy he is. Now, bear in mind that he's actually not at war against us at the moment, so we don't really need to worry about him too much. Uh, King Ulrich's now doing stuff again. Isn't that great? Yes, I love him. He's so, so nice. Not. Uh, okay, well, Varius Legatus, can you, uh, can you come out of your castle, please? <laughs> I would very much appreciate it. Oh, there we go. Villagers report that Igrim is killing humans to create more fallen. Yeah, that's the new ability that Igrim has in this version of Pendor. He is capable of converting uh, prisoners that he takes into new units of his, which is actually kind of awesome. You know, it's a pretty cool mechanic that they have implemented there. But it does make him much harder for me and, well, many others, I suppose, to deal with. So uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just going to wait here for some time and see whether this guy decides to come out because I would love to be able to get him. He is just so, so good. He's got a great nature and uh, he's got a massive amount of renown as well, which means that he has a really big party size capacity. Potentially, potentially. Aha, here we go. We actually got Varius Legatus in a battle with us and uh, I'm hopeful that we will be able to take him on. Now bear in mind that he actually does not have 200, 235 in his own army. He actually has a friend that has joined him. So let's see if we can actually do something to him here. I don't know what his friend actually has in his army. I just know that Varius Legatus does not have a huge amount of people. He has about 70 and the other guy has about 160. So that's the main reason why we're actually facing the amount of people that we are. Otherwise, it would have been very easy. He was actually on his way to Yanos, and I positioned myself in such a way so that I could potentially intercept that because obviously I was in a pretty bad positioning beforehand when you saw me so I decided you know what he's probably gonna go to Yanos if anywhere so I decided I'm gonna move myself back down there and see what we can do oh yeah and apparently someone said in the comments that the shield that I'm looking for the shield that I am actually using right here the uh, the kite shield this is apparently a uh, unlockable item from I think capturing Eldarion himself, which is obviously one of the Noldor heroes. And uh, <laughs> let's just say that I'm probably not going to be able to defeat him, at least at the moment. I think I would probably be able to defeat him if I had a full army. And I'm talking about, I don't know, 250, 300 Iron Knights. I'd probably be able to do something against him at that point. But anything before that... Just forget it, because he's got, like, I don't even know how much he has. You know, usually when I see those guys, I'm just like, okay, they're Noldor. I probably should just ignore them, you know? Probably should just ignore them and just try and do my very best without bothering them too much, you know? That's the kind of thing that I think about when I see them. Because usually I want to be peaceful with them rather than attack them, so... I never usually analyze their army or anything like that, but... Yeah, the point is, is that... If at some point we do want to attack him, then we are going to have to then earn a huge amount of reputation again to be able to access uh, access Elecrae and all that stuff. Oh yeah, and, and bear in mind that I am actually kind of close to being able to unlock the mystical rune plate as well. I know a couple of people are asking about that and what my progress is on it and all that stuff. Uh, quite a while ago, and I apologize for not giving you any kind of update, but I did say I think that I was not really not really convinced that it was the best course of action for us because it is going to require a Qualus gem or two, I think it might be one, to be able to upgrade the Mystical Rune Plate into something that is actually useful. Because Mystical Rune Plate by itself, it's a good piece of armor, don't get me wrong, it's a good piece of armor, but it is basically on par or worse than the Noldor armor that I'm wearing right now. And same thing with the upgraded portions of the armor as well. So, for example, uh, I think it's Ru Ruby. 
yeah, yeah, Ruby Mystical Rune Plate or something like that. That is the best armor in the game, as far as I am aware. And that thing is not not like super super good. Like it's it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's really really good. It's very very you know protective. And as I say, it is the best armor in the game. It is the heaviest, one of the heaviest armors in the game. Obviously at the same time. But the thing is, is that the Noldor armor that I'm wearing right now is basically just a little bit less less good than that, as far as I'm aware. But I could be wrong, so obviously don't quote me on that, because I'm not looking at the stats right now. I'm just thinking off off by heart, you know. So, yeah. I, as far as I'm aware, the ruby plate is the best, followed by the sapphire or the emerald, and then obviously all of the Noldor stuff. But the Noldor stuff is just so much easier to acquire, so much cheaper to acquire as well, because if you think about it, the armor that I'm wearing right now, I gained it for free, because I just won a Noldor tournament. And the mystical rune plate has the potential to uh, upgrade with a Qualus Gem, and a Qualus Gem, instead of gaining a Qualus Gem, you could gain a large pouch of diamonds, which is 100,000 in cash instead. And that would potentially be something that we might want to think about, you know, instead of a Qualus Gem. Because if I went for the Qualus Gem, then yeah, I can do some really good stuff with it. You know, I can upgrade my companions a lot, I could upgrade myself, you know, all that stuff. But... If I wanted the cash, which I'm actually kind of struggling with right now, then I would have to take the large pouch of diamonds from a unique spawn. And, uh, well, then obviously, you know, upgrading the, the rune plate would make no difference whatsoever. But let's hope that uh, we can actually take Various Legatus prisoner, in actual fact. We're going to let this guy go because he doesn't have any relation with us. Yes, there we go. We got him. We got him. That is exactly what we wanted. Absolutely fantastic. going to place this armor in the uh in the loot here so that our people can potentially take it if they want there we go and we will then take the rest fantastic all right so various legatus is now ours this is fantastic really really good i'm very pleased about that all right so let's accept his oath of fealty mm, there we go and they are both upstanding or good natured that we just gained and that means that they will not complain ever when we give other people fiefs, as far as I'm aware. So, wow. That's really cool. Got a bunch of prisoners as well. Probably take those to Laria. And then we will be... Well, we'll be in a pretty good position. I am losing a little bit of cash every week, but that is not really a big deal when you can sell, you know, 60 to 80 prisoners for about 10,000 each time. So that's pretty good. And obviously I can also sell, you know, sell various pieces of loot and, and things like that. And I can also participate in tournaments. So I will be going off screen for a little bit of time and we'll see if I can make some good progress. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to gain. Mm, that's the thing. I do actually want to show some of the bigger sieges on the screen. You know, I don't just want to like go off screen and be like, oh, okay, yeah, I took Sez and Janos and Ishkom and Torber and Naltar in, you know, like in like one minute. No, I don't want to do that. I want to go and do these things on screen so that you can actually see them because they're epic, you know, they're epic sieges. And I, I kind of want you to be involved in that, obviously. But anyway, point is, is that uh, I'll probably do a little bit of off screen that is not anything major. And then we'll see where it goes from there. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.